Welcome back to part two of the creating our own game map for Unity tutorial uh, in Cinema 4D here. Um, in the first part, we created this uh, street grid with crosswalks and medians. And then what I also did was I, uh, I went into my top view and I just, on the edges of my spline, uh, my plane, I selected all the edges and I just extruded it a little bit just because I want to have an outer constraint um, so that people can't walk outside of the walls of my city grid when they're inside of Unity. So that's pretty easy. Just hold uh, you know, your um, Windows key and then you can um, you know, drag up or down um, to uh, extrude the, the edges of the walls. So now we're going to be starting to add some more uh, detailed elements of our game map here. And then our, our final thing that we'll do is, is create, um, create buildings that we're going to put um, in and around our scene. So um, inside Content Browser, if you go into your uh, broadcast 3D objects, you've got these street objects. And uh, while they look pretty good and usable, I mean, some of these, like the stop sign um, and the stop light, look really good you might want to consider using them but we're gonna go ahead and create these on our own um, and just you know we have these as references um, I don't think we need a highway sign since we're in a tight street area um, we probably need a parking meter or two and then we're definitely gonna need a, a stoplight so let's start with the stoplight um, I already kinda created created this but we're gonna create it from scratch so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a cube and get this into position and get it into a size that is going to work for our stoplight. Um, I'm going to bring this right over my intersection and shrink this down quite a bit. And then I'm going to need some, some spheres here. To I'm going to turn my light off because it's a little tough to see. There we go. And let's get these turned way down and put these as bulging out uh, for our, our lights. We obviously need three of these. Cool, that looks good. Um, really basic looking stoplight. The only thing, other thing you'll notice is, um, you know, sometimes they have these, the top uh, cover for the, for the light itself. Let's create a spl uh, <clears throat> arc spline. And let's drag that into place here. Um, first things first, let's shrink it down. Bring that roughly to where we want. Make it a full 180 degrees, and then let's scale down. And we need three of these. But first, we'll just finish up the one we have. Um, and inside of it, we're going to use the the rectangle. And this will make sense in a second if you don't know what I'm doing. I know I'm doing this haphazardly, as I do most things but it's best to see not only how to do things the right way, but also um, why other certain ways are less efficient. And I mean efficient, not sufficient. Okay, so I've got this. Let's put this in a sweep. Rectangle, arc, and then let's switch these. Okay, and let's get the... Uh, Rectangle turn way down, like that, in and on top. Okay. Cool. Now it isn't perfect, obviously. Um, I'm going to take my rectangle and resize it a little bit uh, this way. Actually, let's make it editable. There we go. And then drag it out. Cool. So now we got what we want. Um, let's make it editable and let's connect objects and delete. And again, my axis is just doing whatever the hell it wants. 
Let's get that into a place that's workable. And let's extrude this out a couple more times so we have our three stop and light, stop light covers. Something like that. Good enough. All right, I'm going to group this up. Actually, not quite yet. So I've got it hanging out in the middle of my intersection. And then I'm going to need to create um, the post for it. So let's go into our front view here. Um, and let's essentially take a spline. I'm going to use the pen tool here. Go up to about where it looks like the middle of the light and make a point and then the same thing I'm gonna go straight over to the actual light I'm gonna hit escape and go back to our uh, perspective view here so we've got this post now in the middle of our scene similar to how we just made the light cover I'm going to grab rectangle rotate this around 90 size it down quite a bit and then the same thing we're going to put this inside of a sweep um, and we need to flip flop the arrangement and let's make our rectangle much smaller so that we've got a nice looking post here alright so there's our stoplight um, looking pretty good right in the middle of our intersection let's make that editable let's just select let's clean all this up select children connect objects delete and then we're gonna group uh, we're gonna group this object so I'm gonna have to change some materials here at some point cool um, and obviously a stoplight goes red yellow and green so let's create those materials real quick Use the luminance channel and go red. I don't need reflectance quite yet. Um, let's go yellow. And green. And let's see what we got. All right, not bad. Um, the other thing that you could do is add <clears throat> in the reflectance. We turn that off, but we could go into our layer mask and use the um, the legacy uh, shader because it's it for me. And there's a good tutorial on grayscale scale gorilla about this. Um, it kind of sucks that. Uh, that this has changed a little bit. I kind of preferred the old way. So if we go to Reflectance, uh, Legacy, and we go in here and we do the Fresnel, we get that nice look that we had before, um, where we get that edge, and that's what we that's what we want. So we're gonna do this. Um, I should have done this right away, but we're gonna do this on all of them. Right on. <clears throat> that looks a little bit better. Um, and I'm gonna make just a nice uh, one more one more material here. Um, I'm not gonna use the luminous channel. I'm just gonna use color. I'm gonna go to a nice black, and we're gonna use this for the everything else on our street light. Okay, so after you connected all your objects and deleted, um, we now want to create the intersection so I'm gonna drag this over and then rotate it by 90 um, axis isn't in the best location but that's okay I'll just kinda do this the way I've been doing everything else which is a little haphazardly um, let's extrude that out let's rotate it 90 reposition And let's go one more time here. And reposition. All right, so we've got stoplights now on all intersections. Um, 
and then we can group this and we can clone this the same way we cloned um, the medians and crosswalks. A little bit tricky here. Um, let's see the grid array. Let's make sure we extend this way out. Let's have a look at what we're looking at. Um, the count's going to be weird. Let's see. Correct height. There we go. All right. So we just basically extend this out until we get it into place. Looks like it's about 32 meters out. And cool. We've got all of our stoplights there. And then I guess we can do it the other way as well. Right there, 32 meters that way. So now we have stoplights on every single corner. Pretty cool. Um, next up, we're going to create um, just some really basic fire hydrants that we're going to stick around. Um, the best thing to do is we can use this example fire hydrant that has more items than we need. And we can bring it in right into our scene here. Um, and we can just use this to model our low poly um, fire hydrant. So coming into the front view here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the circle, make sure it is on the XZ, drag this into position at the very top, and get the size appropriate for beginning to mimic the fire hydrant. And I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up once I've put my circle into the loft nerb here. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got here for our fire hydrant. Um, yeah, that works. It's not a bad replica of our fire hydrant. Um, and then similar, I didn't create these cylinders coming out of it, but that's easy to add. Uh, let's just drag this to a corner here first. Um, bit bigger than we need it. So resize the whole thing down quite a bit. Put it here near the corner. A little bigger. Select all children, connect objects, delete. Um, we'll just create a version of our stoplight material. And we'll just get rid of that luminance. So it's just solid red there and then we just need the uh, cylinder make this a lot smaller Could have gone into a different view, made this quicker. Sorry for the delay. We'll just drag that in like so. Cool. And then let's just make a copy of that. Make it a little bit smaller, but extend it out and rotate it another 90. Oops. stick this right through something like that let's connect all objects and delete and let's give them a nice red there so that's good enough for a very quick and dirty fire fire hydrant um, let's call this fire hydrant And let's 
spread these suckers out. So using our cloner, we're going to do a grid. And we're just going to kind of extend these out. We don't need the Y, but we do need the X and Z. And put these all over the place. So same thing, let's extend to the edge of our map. How far do we want to go with these? Probably about 50, close to 50 meters. And the count. That's a lot of fire hydrants. We'll just do six as the count. And that appears to be working pretty well. Um, okay, and so we've got that done. And let's just duplicate it out a couple of times. So we'll go one to the right, or one to the left, and one to the right. You might need to adjust because some of these streets aren't the same size. So I will change that a little bit. Okay, so we've got a street now with street lights and fire hydrants starting to come together. Um, obviously now we are just in need of getting ourselves some buildings and then we'll be into the animation part and before you know it, this thing will be in Unity and we'll be walking around.